After I posted my cranky video, it exploded. I got so many new subscribers from that, and within a week it became my most viewed video. At the time of recording this, currently sat at 25k views. That's insane. Thank you so much for that. I love making these videos and seeing people's positive reactions. It just puts a smile on my face. People have even started to joke that these videos are like the unlucky tugs in his series of Sodor's Finest. And yeah, he's probably an inspiration for my style of video essay. But people saying that did get me thinking. You see, since my cranky video dropped, people have been asking me to speak about other characters, but they're only asking for main characters or ones the unlucky tug has already covered. Now there's nothing wrong with covering stuff that other people have already spoken about, but I thought I wanted to do something a bit different, a bit like what I did with Cranky. So in today's video, I want to tell you a story of not one, not two, but three engines whose stories are all linked and intertwined, and how two of them became fan favourites, while the other rusts in the scrapyard at the back of our minds. Yep, that's right, you saw the thumbnail. Today I'll be covering Paxton, Sydney, and Norman. All three of these characters made their debut in Day of the Diesels. They were added in as background characters. Only Norman and Paxton even were given names at that point, and that was only in the music video that was made for the film, and didn't actually have any speaking roles. They didn't really have a character at this point between them. They were only there to fill out the roster of bad Diesels to take over the Steamworks in that wreck of a film. The fire must not spread! Sodor must not be in danger! <laughs> they did, however, leave a blank canvas for the show to go on and use. Paxton is very popular and probably the most well-loved character out of the three, and the most developed, so we'll start with him first. After Day of the Diesels, the next time we see him is in the next movie, Blue Mountain Mystery. Right away, he's set up to be close friends with the Now Gage engines, and they like him too. This makes the audience know to trust him. It's not explicitly said that Paxson is a good worker, but we know the Now Gage engines are, and so it makes it obvious that he's not a bad engine if they like him. Throughout this special, we see small bits and pieces of Paxton, and his newly crafted personality shines through. A hard worker who is a bit gullible, especially when it comes to Diesel, but who does the right thing in the end. Paxton, from this moment forward, became instantly liked. He was different, he stood out from every other character we had had up until this point. He was also the first good Diesel to be added into the show since Salty. <laughs> so it was a refreshing change. There's no wonder Paxton became so well-loved. Because Blue Mountain Mystery was such a good movie, and Paxton now had a gullible personality, no one minded that he acted out of character in Day of the Diesels. Those actions could have easily been chalked up to him being manipulated like Percy was in that special. This special also marks the first appearance of Diesel and Paxton's very weird friendship. I'll speak about it a bit later, but for now, let's just say it's very clear that Paxton is being used by Diesel. Paxton's next major appearance is in Gordon Runs Dry, where he stops too late at a signal and a rock from his truck hits Gordon. Paxton instantly shows concern and wants Gordon to be checked out for damage, but Gordon is too proud to do so and ends up leaking from his water tank and running out of water. Paxton ends up having to save him. Paxton doesn't gloat when Gordon says he should have listened. He is very matter of fact and just agrees in a non-hostile way while making him very likeable, it also shows his true character, and that, while gullible and at times clumsy, he can do his job well and looks out for others. When Gordon refuses to release his brakes and be shunted, Paxton becomes very stern. He knows he needs to help Gordon, and the only way to do it is if Gordon cooperates. This is showing him taking initiative. He convinces Gordon that he does need to listen to him, and Gordon eventually agrees. In The Lost Puff, Paxton doesn't listen to the fat controller when he's told not to act silly, and his antics cause Thomas to crash into Toby, who is taking on water. Paxton panics and runs away before he can see what is happening, and later on overhears Toby joke about Thomas having lost his puff. As Paxton doesn't know much about steam engines, he mistakes it for something seriously wrong with Thomas, and thinks it's because of the accident he caused. Obviously on the surface, this paints Paxton in a bad light. He looks like a reckless idiot. 
and this episode is often called one of his worst because of that. However, I disagree and I feel like it just adds a lot to him. While yes, he gets caught up in his silly behaviour and runs off, he later shows a lot of guilt towards what he did when he thinks that Thomas is in trouble and hurt because of him. He feels so bad he forgets everything else, drops everything he's doing, to go and apologise to a very confused Thomas and promise to make things right by finding his puff. At the end of it all, when he learns he was mistaken, he isn't angry or sad, but rather finds it funny and takes it on the chin. It's also shown many times in this episode that Paxton is aware of how others see and treat him. He feels silly when he finds out he was chasing a cloud, or when he realises that's not how engines work. He's not oblivious to the fact he's not the smartest, but doesn't let it bother him. It's just very hard to dislike a character like that. Optimism leaks from Paxton, and it's infectious. In The Missing Christmas Decorations, a very underrated episode. <laughs> yeah, Twinkle Toes! You look great up there! Paxton is told to go steal some decorations from Tidmouth Sheds with Diesel 10. He is very reluctant, but does so in order not to upset the other Diesels. He's also not sure how to say no to an order. However, after a while he stands up for himself against Diesel 10, putting his foot down and saying enough is enough, wanting nothing more to do with this and just to get his job done for the Fat Controller. Hey, Paxton? Um, no. Diesel 10? I don't want to take any more decorations. This shows great growth from him. Diesel 10, while not as threatening as he once was, is still a menacing presence. For an engine who up until now has shown almost no backbone of his own, it's an amazing feat, and it's something that will carry on with Paxton. At the end of the episode he comes in clutch, showing he was right to want to do his job, as the job itself was to collect decorations for the diesel works, and in turn utterly humiliates and undermines Diesel 10 in front of all the steam engines. In Disappearing Diesels we see Paxton once more, and it's pointed out just how well liked he is. Because of his kind nature, he helps give the Diesels a good name, but despite all this, Diesel still wants to play a trick on him. He makes all the other Diesels hide in their sheds from Paxton. Once more showing his kind nature, Paxton presumes something terrible must have happened to all the other engines. He gets himself stressed and all wound up trying to find them, but Salty eventually calms him down, comforting his friend. But his kind words are soon thrown out the window when Paxton sees Diesel and wants to talk, but Diesel runs away to keep up the joke. You can really see how little Diesel cares for Paxton in this episode. Seeing him is just stupid and easy to trick. The episode even brings attention to this. Oh, what do you want to go chasing after him for? He's my friend! Is he really? When Diesel runs out of fuel and explains everything he did to Paxton, the little Diesel is more worried about getting him to the next station to refuel than anything else and this leaves Diesel speechless. Paxton doesn't help out in order to get something in return, nor does he do it reluctantly like some engines. He helps out where he can and does his job because he wants other engines to be happy. As long as you're not upsetting others, he doesn't care how you treat him. It's one of his major flaws as a character. It's how he finds himself in toxic friendships like with Diesel in this episode, and ends up getting burnt by them time and time again. He seems to lack a feeling of self-worth and only stands up to others when they are being actively upset by someone like Diesel 10 before. Being a flawed character however is not a bad thing. Characters should never be black and white, always good or always bad. They should always act like real people. They have a set of moral codes they wish to hold themselves to, sometimes succeeding, sometimes failing, and Paxton is a prime example of this. In the Great Race, Diesel plans to use Paxton to get to the Great Railway Show. He decides to hide Paxton as a truck, so Diesel can look stronger than Henry, when Paxton moves forward and looks like he's pulling more trucks by himself than he is. Paxton, however, is hesitant. He's even more so when Diesel starts singing, leaving him very confused. I'm full of surprises! Are you singing, Diesel? They ought to say of me. Due to Paxton, Den and Dart, the plan goes wrong and they accidentally make Thomas crash into Norman instead. Diesel is furious and starts threatening the three of them, mocking them, rightfully, for confusing a whistle for a horn. However, when he ends up trapped in a crate, they just laugh at him. Again, this shows that while he wants to help Diesel, he sees him as a friend. 
he still has the backbone to laugh in his face. And that really is the end of Paxton's story that I'm going to talk here. One thing I should note is I will not be covering anything past season 21 in this. While Paxton, Sydney, and Norman do appear afterwards, they're just really more of the same and there's nothing really to add to their characters here. Oh, and that and the fact those seasons are, you know, bad. Those parts look brand new. Do you know what that is? Uh, it's a clue. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. To sum him up, Paxton works because not many engines are as gullible or overbearingly nice as him. While it make him across as forced, being overly nice is exactly what Paxton's character is, so it's not an issue. This unique personality makes up for his rather boring Class 08 shunter design. Paxton has fairly become a fandom favourite, and this is why. Wow, yep, yeah, looking back, that's quite a lot, and we're only really a third way through this video. However, now Paxton's out of the way, let's move on to Sydney. There should be a lot less to speak about with him. In Day of the Diesels, it's never explained why Sidney is missing his wheels, and he just seems pointless in that film, only being seen in one frame where he's laughing with the others. However, where he really comes into his own is in the missing Christmas decorations. In this episode, Sidney is shown to be looked down on by the other Diesels for an unknown reason. He lacks wheels, and as we later know, he's been waiting for two years for them to arrive. Diesel 10 uses Sidney as a decoration more than an actual person and takes every opportunity to mock him. By the end of the episode, when Percy is about to leave the Diesel Works, he notices Sidney and asks how long he's been waiting for his wheels. He's told he's been waiting for two years, and so he goes to the Fat Controller and finally gets Sidney his new wheels. We still don't know much about Sidney, however, by the end of the episode. It's almost like they weren't really sure what they were doing when they were writing his personality, because in this episode he doesn't have his trademark forgetfulness. However, he does have one line where he claims to have forgotten how long he's been waiting for his wheels. And from this, his entire personality seems to have been formed. The next time we see him in any major way is in his own solo episode, Sydney Sings. Percy has had an accident and Sydney wants to help right away, until Thomas reminds him that he's already got a job to do. This tells us straight away that Sydney is a friendly Diesel, like Paxton, and his forgetful side is put in full focus as well. He is told to collect Percy's new wheels, but he keeps forgetting where he's meant to be going. He makes up a song to remind himself, but he keeps forgetting the words to it, and he gets confused. Ha ha ha, hey hey hey, a very special job for me. I must get there before it's dark to collect an elephant from the animal park. Eventually, he ends up back at Natford, where he started. He finds some passengers who need to get to Brendam, and taking the initiative, he takes them there to help out. This shows that he is indeed friendly, and that him being concerned over Percy was not just because Percy was his friend. Sydney is genuinely just a nice diesel who just wants to help out people wherever he goes. At the docks, he runs into the Fat Controller, who reminds him about taking Percy as wheels, which he promptly goes and does. This episode does two major things. For starters, it shows Sydney is forgetful, and because of that, he's often mocked by the other engines. But he doesn't mind, as he's often forgotten the fact they've even spoken to him. It mimics how he was forgotten at the diesel works, not only for the two years he was left there without any wheels, but also when there was the fire in Day of the Diesels and no one seemed to care about him. Like Paxton before him, Sydney's story is a little sad. Not only does he struggle to remember things, but he forgets how the other engines mistreat him, leaving him blissfully unaware of how little the engines around him like him. It really feels like every engine he meets in this episode is laughing behind his back, except Percy. Speaking of Percy, this episode uses him to be a parallel to Sydney, with both of them having to get their wheels replaced by the other. 
It's a silent moral as well in treating people right and getting treated right in return. After this, however, we barely see Sydney in a major role outside of small supporting roles where the rest of the Diesels are around. Despite this, you'd be hard pressed to find a member of the fandom who actively dislikes him. He may not be anyone's favourite like Paxton, but Sydney being forgetful is unique and it makes him stand out. So far, both Sydney and Paxton are not only improved characters from when we first see them in Day of the Diesels, but they have both had chances to show what makes them stand out. Both are now full characters, no longer just the angry goons smashing up the steamworks. Now let's turn our attention to an engine who hasn't really had that same chance. Norman never really stood a chance from the moment he was drawn up. He's angered railway buffs for years, ever since he was first on screen. For those unaware, Norman is the same class of engine as Dennis, and in real life, only one of these engines was ever made. For that reason, people feel like there shouldn't be two engines of this class in Thomas. Personally, does it bother me? No. It's fine if it bothers you, but honestly, I don't see the issue. Even back in the Railway series, Audrey loved to make up engines that should not exist to make jokes about them. The Scottish twins have numbers that were never carried by real engines in real life, for example. So I don't think having two BR11001 is that big of an issue. Unlike the other two diesels in this video, Norman never really got a standalone episode, which means it's much harder to piece together who he is. He also doesn't really do much in any of his side appearances. Just like Sydney, the next time we see Norman appear is in the missing Christmas decorations. He is the one to tell Percy about Sydney waiting for his wheels. The small amount of screen time he gets here implies he's just as rude as he was back in Day of the Diesels. He doesn't seem to care about Sydney at all. That would of course be fine. We don't want too many Diesels all feeling the same because they're all generic nice characters. However, if you go into the Frozen turntable with this mindset, you'll be surprised to see Norman is friendly to the steam engines. He doesn't say much, but he's very welcoming to let Thomas sleep at the diesel works. This feels very out of character for the engine we've seen so far. In every other appearance after this, he is just friendly. But that's it. He does nothing, and unlike the other two, has nothing to make him stand out. It doesn't help that Dennis, who only has one episode, is somehow more complex with his personality being lazy. Norman just has nothing going for him and it feels that like the writers knew that too as they just used him as a background character. Not every character needs an arc. Not every character needs to stand out. But with so many generic bad guy Diesels and Thomas, Norman blends in. And considering how interesting he looks, I think he deserves more of a spotlight and it's a shame that he's not a better character. As I say, Norman is a nothing character, there's nothing more I can talk about with him. But I'm going to do something a bit different here because of that. I'm going to try and give Norman a character. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably know I'm somewhat of a writer myself. So I thought this would be a fun activity to do. However, I'm going to make myself some limitations. Some things I must do in this character I'm crafting for Norman to try and make him feel like he fits into the show. Firstly, he must have a trait that makes him unique. Not only from the other engines so the fandom will remember him, but from the other Diesels as they're who he'll spend most his time with. If he doesn't stand out from them, there's no point in trying to make him stand out at all. Secondly, he must have some sort of character flaw that holds him back and causes conflict with other characters in the story. Without a flaw, as I said before, the character is just boring. And thirdly, I must try and come up with an original story idea for him. So how would I fix Norman? Well first off, I would make him a nasty character. Paxton and Sydney are good being nice characters, but to stand out, Norman can't just be a goody-goody as well. Norman should be gruff, hostile to talk to, always wearing a frown. Negativity should be his flaw. Always the pessimist, never the optimist. That's what Norman should be. And why should he be negative all the time? Well, that's where his trait comes in. The thing that should make Norman stand out is his bad luck. Norman's basis was a prototype, so he should be cursed with things going wrong, breaking down, coming off the rails at random, that sort of thing. Some may say this is a bit too close to Derek, but as long as you keep his misfortune that happens to him varied, it should still feel fresh. Think Boomer from Tugs for an inspiration. However, nothing that happens to Norman should be too severe. If it does, he becomes too similar to Boomer. The things that happen to him should be minor inconveniences. Stuff like a box of tools is laying in his way. Stuff like his engine backfiring. Little things that he can say, yes, this is my bad luck, but that will not instantly end whatever job he's doing. Norman is still a hard worker at the end of the day, even with his bad luck. 
as I said before, tie this into his personality. Have him always complaining. Not about the work like other engines would, but saying stuff like, why does this always happen to me? Make him the opposite of Sydney and Paxton, where they're always really happy-go-lucky. So, that's my first two points out the way. But how would I write a story around Norman? Well, here's an idea for a story I came up with. Feel free to give your own below, and if you like this story, feel free to use it for yourself as long as you give me some credit. That said, this isn't some masterfully crafted story. This is just a vague plot outline. First off, I would have a solo episode, focusing solely around Norman. I'd call it Normally Norman. We're introduced to him for the first time as a main focus, as up until now we'd have only seen him in the background, having engine issues and his name being dropped whenever there's an engine having an accident. A character like Mavis would be sent to work at the Diesel Works for the first time, and she experiences Norman's bad luck. Then in darts could say something along the lines of, if bad luck's about, it's normally after Norman. At first, you could have Mavis not believing this and thinking it's silly, yet she keeps seeing proof to show he has bad luck. His coupling snaps. Happy Hook drops a box of tools on him. Many different things could happen, and it could be a very interesting concept. And partway through the episode, Mavis is convinced. However, all the way through, Norman has been nothing but hostile towards her. She could see that his brake van's being left behind, and when she tries to tell him, he is rude to her. She'd feel hurt by this, and so likely not tell him about the brake van out of spite. Maybe Paxton sees and she dismisses it as, that old fuddy-duddy would likely have lost his brake van anyway with his luck, or some other rude remark. Then, when Norman has his accident, Mavis comes to help and feels terrible. She takes him back to the diesel works that night, and when they're alone, he could say sorry for being so rude to her and thank her for saving him. Maybe saying he doesn't like talking to others often, as it causes them to have bad luck too, but maybe promising to speak to her more in future. It would be a nice sweet moment, not changing Norman into a nicer character as he'd still be gruff and rude with everyone else, but it gives him a friendlier side and a friend in Mavis, a character who he acts differently to, so depending who's in a scene, it can change how he's going to interact. And, well, that's my story idea. I think it sounds like a good episode, but of course it needs to be ironed out and you'd need to write it, but that's just a thought I had, because... At the end of it, Normans could be made into an interesting character. He is just a blank slate, but I've never seen a take on Norman that I found interesting. To sum up this video, I'd say look no further than the title. It really says it all. Paxton was remade for the better. Sydney was remembered after being forgotten, but Norman just feels like he was rejected by the writers. I do hope we see more fan content focusing around Norman in future. He's such a missed opportunity. But with that, we're at the end of our video. So if you enjoyed that and want to see me speak about more things, please click this video here to see a video that YouTube has recommended specially for you. And goodbye.